As a gay man with an affinity for male aliens, you might be wondering what I think about Bioware's latest news about making Joel a gay male romance option. I can summarize my feelings in one word. Pandering. Why, you may ask? Well, Bioware seems to have only given two reasons as to why Joel is suddenly becoming a male romance option. The first one has to deal with achievements, which is stupid. I guess the achievement for a romance options in Mass Effect Andromeda involve having having completed three romance options throughout the course of all your playthroughs. So I guess as a gay man, I shouldn't have the uh, Pomodoro achievement in Mass Effect 1 or 2. That's just idiotic. If a player wants the achievement, they're gonna bang whoever it takes to get that achievement. We're not called achievement whores for nothing. The second reason is the one that I take most issue with. If the Angara have a sense of gender fluidity in among their race, then why wasn't Joel a bisexual romance option to begin with? And the fact that Bioware is having to go out of the way to rewrite and re-record lines is not only retconning, but pandering. If the Angara have already expressed this view of gender fluidity, then why does Joel need to be rewritten to fit this narrative that he can be romanced by a male Scott? When I originally heard that Bioware wanted to improve the same-sex male romance options, I kind of thought they were talking about the sex scenes. If you take a look at Bioware's track record for same-sex love scenes, they tend to fall short compared to their straight love scenes. Unless, of course, that character just happens to be bisexual, then it's just the palette swap. To be fair, at least Joel's sex scene is a lot better than Garrus or Tally's sex scene. And for some bizarro-looking alien with some strange body feature, I do praise Bioware for showing such intimacy with such a creature. However, I feel that if the roles were reversed, if Joel had been a male-only romance option from the start versus a bisexual one, I sincerely doubt we would have gotten a level of detail with that romance scene. The impression I'm starting to get from Bioware and the fact that they've needed to consult with LGBTQ whatever communities, and I guess anybody who's not heterosexual that just happens to work with them, is that Bioware seems to like the idea of being diverse without actually being diverse. Sort of like they're just checking a box among a list. And that's the biggest issue that I take with it. If the desire isn't originally there to begin with, then it's likely not going to come out good because you're just going through the motions. I mean, how good would Life is Strange be if dot not or whatever however you pronounce that went back and repatched life and strange to make warren the main romance options because people complained that the game was too homo that'd be ridiculous and it's not like i would have been opposed to joel slowly becoming more open towards the relationship with a human male versus maybe more readily accepting of a relationship with a female human. It's just the fact that you have to go back and rewrite and kind of shove it in there, as opposed to naturally developing it, maybe kind of coaxing him to be more open and accepting. And that is the main issue I take with Caden and Shepard's uh, son bisexuality in Mass Effect 3. It isn't the fact that it's a retcon, it's the fact that it just comes out of nowhere. I remember reading some forum or quote from someone from Bioware stating that the reason why male shepherd can't have same-sex relationships to where a female shepherd can is that it didn't fit their, their narrative of a male shepherd being able to romance males or something like that. Which, if that's the creator's uh, intent, I mean, sure, it's not really inclusive, especially given that Shepard's supposed to be a player character, but that's their vision. Fine. Well, why couldn't that have been worked into Mass Effect 3's 
Shepard character development, or lack thereof. Shepard being faced with the end of the galaxy maybe becomes more open and accepting of his feelings, maybe no longer needing to put on some sort of macho persona that he feels he needs to put on. Likewise with Caden, maybe now that the galaxy is about to end, he's more open and willing to express his feelings for Shepard that he had, because let's face it, he set off my non-existent gaydar from the start. Just have them express that now that the galaxy's ending, they're more willing to just be themselves around each other and willing to accept themselves. Likewise with Steve's relationship, just have a male shepherd acknowledge that he's never been interested in males, but now he's kind of willing to try it. Because Steve is somehow unlike some other person he's never met before, as unbelievable as that would be. All of that's trite, sure, but at least it's better than no explanation. But I guess the biggest question to ask ourselves is, is this going to help Mass Effect Andromeda become better and maybe sell more copies? Never having played the game, I seriously doubt it. Does it pique my interest a bit? Admittedly, yes, it does. Because I'm a shallow person and I should feel bad about myself. But am I ready to shell out however much money it, the game is worth now? No. I'm not in any rush. I'd rather see the game as a finished product. So I'm currently at no rush to see a male shepherd bang Joel. Though if you throw in Drek and maybe some other Solarian in the mix, then we'll talk. Though now what I'm really curious is as to where Bioware is going with Mass Effect. Is Mass Effect Andromeda going to have any single player DLC now? Is there going to be set up for future events? Going back to my original point about over time character development, maybe that's why they suddenly decided to rewrite Joel because now they couldn't get the chance to. Well, the future's looking bleak for Mass Effect. I guess only time will tell where Bioware is going to end up as a company. Huh. Does that mean I don't have to make a gay Joel romance video now?